tank so famous around the world that even in the game we have two tanks which are using some components of it. I am Neil and this is my review of M48. The higher we climb up the tiers, the less amount of tanks tend to be real. But what I mean by real? Many of them exist in some way. Well, many of them were mentioned at least here and there. Some of them had prototypes built, but some of them didn't even exist at all. M48 is one of the few real ones, tanks with quite rich history. So maybe it is time to get a cup of tea, click the pause button, make yourself a good tea you like, come back and resume. Sit back and just enjoy as this will take more than usual and might be my longest review ever. M48 started to make dance into history played in 1951. It was meant to be more than just modernization of M47, it was meant to be something new. They created completely new spherical turret and used holes similar to M103. They actually made a new tank, first version of M48. Very soon it was found out that over 100 of them had uh, hole penetration issues. They were easier to pen than expected. These tanks were removed for training purposes and were designed, sorry, designated as M48C. Then there were M48A1, A2 and A2C versions, slowly improving M48 to keep up with the world and to be a bit ahead, if possible. US produced around 12,000 of these M48s from 1952 till 1959. From 1959 they were only upgraded, so uh, no new M48 came out of the line as there was already M60 being finished and in 1960 produced. But now it gets a bit more major. Up until this moment all M48s loved to burn due to hydraulic fluid which used to catch a fire on head and no one bothered to fix it. In 1963 it got eventually fixed, but in the same time most of the M48 were already converted to M48A3s, which countered the issue with moving from a gasoline engine to a diesel one. Funny about this conversion is, many A3s were very different from each other, and they were upgraded from different versions on of M48s. Some of them were upgraded from A1s, some A2s or A2Cs and so on. Even crew count was different, ranging from 3 to 5 crew members. Moving on to A4, which was just a proposal of refitting A3 hulls with M60 turrets. But why was that? Well, M60 A2 project was kind of failure and as a result there was surplus of M60 turrets, so they tried to find some use for it. The next and the most successful version is M48A5, basically the one which we had in the game before the turret got buffed. In mid 70s, M48s were finally fitted with 105mm gun and basically first A5 were A3s with the new cannon. In 1976, US took ideas from Israel and modified the commander's hatch to a low profile one also called Erdan. U or D A N, not urban like fighting in the city. This version got designation M48 A5 API, and later on it was considered a standard. And from that moment, all A5s had this threat, and API got removed from the name. Last M48s were converted into A5s in 1979, and they stayed in US service till mid 90s. M48s attended multiple wars, and let me mention a few of them. The first one which comes to my mind, and probably to yours as well, is Vietnam. This tank is basically icon of Vietnam War. M48s would be probably the most photographed tank of Vietnam War. In this war they had only few tank to tank encounters, and most of their job was to protect the infantry and to sweep up mines. You heard it right, sweep up mines. There were basically only two tanks, US and Allied forces were able to protect crew from the mines, at least to some reasonable level. So there was a two lane paved road 
with a name Highway 19. Previously, the road used to be sweeped manually by soldiers walking on the dirt sh shoulders with mine detectors. This process had to be done daily and you can imagine what was the impact on the traffic flow. All the convoys basically had to slow down and became way too easy target for ambushes. So, Patton came into the game. Actually, two patterns, one on each side of the road, one track on shoulders and one on pavement, rushing on the road. That way the crew was rather safe and if they met a mine eventually, it just blew off wheel or two. There were other wars M48s took place, like Indo-Pakistani wars in the Middle East or Africa. Interesting enough, in Indo-Pakistani war it turned out M48s are easy to penetrate by 20 pounders on Centurions and even by 75mm cannons on AMX-13, the French light tanks. All in all, the M48 was so popular it was bought and pre improved by so many countries it reminds me games like Need for Speed Underground. Everyone bought one and everyone did a tune-up. It was improved in apparel by countries like China, Germany, Greece, Israel, South Korea, Spain or Turkey. And it is very popular in these days as well. It is still used by 8 countries. And while many A48 doesn't exist anymore, there are plenty of them which will still stand on their positions for many many years from now as a statues for people to remember, to remember the war. So, how was your tea? Did you enjoy it? Now we are going to look into World of Tanks Blitz. This tank is what all arounder means, it defines all arounder tanks. It basically doesn't excel in anything. The gun? DPM is not great, a bit worse than average. On the other hand, penetration is a bit better than average, just like gun depression. But then it's kind of get hard. The aim time is the worst and gun dispersion is the second to worst. So the gun should be unimpressive. But funny enough, this tank feels reliable in shooting others. It does not have the great gun, but I like it and it feels comfy to shoot from. Object 140 gun feels like murderer, but M48 is comfy. It is not a performance leader, but feels good to shoot. Moving on to mobility, Below average is the right word. The worst top speed, seconded by the average power to weight ratio and one of the worst terrain resistances. Is it not a fast medium, but it's still kind of fast. The problem is, MX-50 is probably faster and that's heavy tank. And yet again, comfy is the word which beats the below average to death. It feels comfy, gives enough push forward and gives time to think. Sometimes you should not be there first, sometimes it's alright to get there a bit late. You'll have more time to revise and make the right decisions. Armor? This is probably getting boring, but it is average as well. And it is just so average. Turret is alright with 178mm, but there are better and many of them. One more thing which is nice about this tank and which is best in class is the view range. And that's it. All in all, it is average tank, just like I said earlier. It really defines what all arounder should be. Check of all trades, master of none. And that's alright. Not every tank should be specialized. You can have great gun and mobility in fragile package in a Leopard 1 or slow, heavy, armored one like a mouse or other specific setups. This one is alright. Being all arounder means you're good in basically any situation. You would not excel in some, but you would do good in all of them. And that's the trade many tanks in tier 10 miss, and it is trade I like about this tank. It really feels like a couch. Comfy, comfortable to ride, comfortable to shoot, comfortable to bounce shots. Just one comfy tank, and it even sounds good. I like this tank and I like it a lot. And just like good tea, it is very comforting. This tank is very, very comforting. So, we are continuing with the review by this master replay. And let me have two uh, nasty TDs which can double tap basically any tank. I'm going for a use, how to use uh, this hold down position for a pattern. Um, I checked. As you see, no one appeared, two tanks on the right, mostly heavy, so they went the 
default heavy route and I see Leopard PT went the default medium route. No one kept C? No, they did. So I'm keeping a B here uh, and we are going to get a bit back because I don't see much of a support. And to deal with this Leopard PTA, lovely shot. Poor PTA is already regretting his decision. And there's one more. Oh, look at that, T62A. Now we are going to get a ah, lovely HE shot. Uh, now we are going to get into this cross position. I'm using those stones in front of me to protect myself from T62A. And I can still peek out and kill Leopard. Look at him. Oh yeah, lovely. And you might have noticed that star is slowly crawling from the back. And I went like, okay, you know what? He is focusing me. I should not push out. Let that star kill him. And I bet he didn't see this coming. <laughs> poor, poor T62A. Yeah, I wanted to type something and I got hit. Yeah, I wrote nice. So there we are. That's Leopard PTA. Done. Lovely, lovely. Poor T62A. Feels so awesome. Alright, we are going to support IS4. But firstly, we need to put more shots. Lovely. So far we are on... We are on two and a half thousand damage. Not bad for a beginning of the game. That's a very interesting decision by IS-7. I think he wanted to flank the IS-4 because it's easier to penetrate IS-4 from the sides and from a year. And uh, shame it cost him a life. Um, now we are going to deal with ST-1. As you might have noticed, I'm checking the left side if the Death Star will not appear again. And then we have now only two dead stars and mouse. We are four on three. It's all right. Hello, dead star. Ah, lovely two shot dead star. One more shot. We are going to high. We don't want to get hit by that. Star. I think he's on reload. Doesn't matter he, because it doesn't exist anymore. So three on two. If I'll go straight here, I'll be dead because that star can easily expect me there. So I'm going to flank around, waiting here and there because no one's disappeared. Our death star is full health, so if he would be shot, we would know it. Nothing just happened, and he got a return fire. Now we want to remove the death star. We want to be sure he will not shoot again. There's a second Death Star we killed. We are on four kills and four and a half thousand damage. Lovely. That's an uh, expected ricochet. Let's put him one more shot. Oh no, I missed this one as well. Oh my god. This next one should be the last one. And there we are. Fifth kill. Lovely. 4750 damage. Yeah, and that's the master replay. I think I quite enjoy this thing, and I enjoy it quite a lot. So, um, if you made it to this point, and probably really finished your team, uh, I hope... Um, well, I thank you first of all. I thank you very much for watching the video, and I really hope you enjoyed it, uh, just like the team. And if you saw it all, which probably you did, and still think the video is trash, click the dislike button. But I hope you liked it, and if you do, give it a like, subscribe for next video, so you won't miss a new one. And at this point, it is time for me to end, and I hope I see you in next video, and in the meantime I wish you a great games, loads of ammo boxes and engine fires. Not yours, theirs. Meals out.